reserves his card favourite on Tuesday. We're about to find out. years, the Melbourne Cup has become the heart and soul of our nation. All set for the Cup. Gates crash back, and they're off and racing to an almighty roar. For many, it is three minutes of emotion that unites Australia like no other. Running on now was Crew, further out Carpton, William Yippie-Io, second coming, 300 to go, led by Ali. For a chosen few, it is the journey of a lifetime. Welcome to the world's greatest two miles. Today, the race that stops a nation will be felt around the world as the pursuit of the Golden Chalice reaches new heights. The colour, the excitement, the passion. And my beautiful wife and children home watching. I love you all. And we got it. From the legends of the turf to the stars of the future. From the names on our lips to those who shall never be forgotten. Flemington on the first Tuesday in November is pure magic. come true once again. Welcome to the 2001 Melbourne Cup Carnival. This is the soon to be completed Federation Square, right in the heart of Melbourne. A celebration of the coming together 100 years ago of all our colonies to form the great nation of Australia. But as young as our country is, our greatest test of thoroughbred horses was already an institution 100 years ago. It touches the hearts and souls of Australians like absolutely nothing else. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Webster. In Australia, New Zealand, North America and Asia, many other parts of the world. Welcome to Network 10's coverage of the best two-mile handicap race there is. The 141st running of the Two Is New Melbourne Cup. If you've been following the build-up, the heart-stopping action continues throughout this famous day. Our team is already on the way to the barriers. The first race jumps in about half an hour. On a day when more than 120,000 people will flock to Flemington Racecourse, the city of Melbourne is at fever pitch. The parties and celebrations have been going on for quite some time. Now Sandra Sully's been in training too for the seemingly endless social world. She's just a few blocks from here making her final preparations. Sandra Sully, good morning. And Tim, what a day this is. I've just come from the traditional Melbourne Cup Day breakfast here at the Hotel Sofitel. And it was here last night that 800 of Melbourne's merrymakers partied the night away at the annual Variety Club Cuppy Ball. As always, it was a wonderful night of colour, fun and fashion. And it gave me the opportunity to catch up with some of the famous faces this carnival attracts. 
We'll be talking to them as well as a whole list of stars from stage, screen and fashion a little later in the day. Time now, though, for me to make my way to Flemington, and there are plenty of ways to do that. At the moment, though, our own Tim Bailey is sampling the Cup Day weather firsthand. Thanks, Sandra, and welcome to Bailey's Eye on the Sky. This has got to be one of the flashiest and fastest ways to get to Flemington. Hey, it's not a limo, but I'm not complaining. Now, I guess you want to forecast it. The heavens certainly smile down on Flemington today. And Mike Larkin now with his weather. Now, what am I up to? Well, later on, I'm going to bring you all the colour and the character of the Melbourne Cup. There's plenty of it. It oozes with excitement, thrills and spills, and we're going to bring it all to you. And even later on in the day, we're going to give somebody one million dollars. That's not a chance to win a million dollars. I'm actually going to give a lucky punter one million dollars. All right, it's time to hang on to your hats. Isn't that right, Lynn? Tim, hats, bags, shoes and everything that is high fashion. Of course, there's the outrageous outfits you see today as well. Well, I'll be spending a lot of the time in marquees. Marquee hopping, a great thing to do on Cup Day. I'll be meeting some of the people that have helped create and grow the reputation of this magnificent event and indeed Melbourne's reputation for great fashion. Cup Day is the day for glitz and glamour as we see Flemington's finest parade on the manicured lawns. For you at home, we have our feature designer fashion competition. You can cast your vote on the three feature designers we'll show you throughout the day in order to win some great prizes. We'll also take you over to the fashions on the field enclosure to see what the best dressed are wearing. Plenty more, but Peter Donigan heads our racing panel. And Peter, I don't know how many people have asked me already this morning, how do you pick a winner on Cup Day? Well, the answer to that, Lynn Talbot, is with great difficulty because, as we say every year, it's a tough assignment picking the winner of the Tui's new Melbourne Cup, and this year is certainly no exception. You can make a case for just about every runner in the race. Well, as you can see, the weather here at Flemington has not been kind. It's been raining overnight and again this morning, and the rain hasn't been the only thing that has been falling here at Flemington. Just a few hours ago, the news came through that Universal Prince had failed a veterinary examination and is out of the Tui's new Melbourne Cup. And a short time afterwards, this is what a distraught trainer, Bede Murray, had to say about the decision. What have they said to you this morning? They reckon he's no different from he was on Saturday. And what do you think? Bullshit. Break the page. Third even. The horse is 101%. What are they saying is wrong with the horse? They reckon he's lame in the back leg. He's um, both side back. That's, uh, and that's the gait that you know him to have for the four no, years the, of his the life? The horse's action is normal, totally normal. How can, the they, is. How can they make that, that assessment when they actually really can't seem to determine what's wrong with the actual horse? Well, that, that's what I said. I said, you, you guys haven't laid a hand on this horse. And I said, come back to the stables, diagnose where the problem is. I want to know. I know they, there's no problem. The, the, where are they saying the problem is? in his back leg, offside have, back. And they pointed it out to you, or? No, they just said he's lame in his offside back leg. Uh, is it how frustrating is that, I mean? It's out here to find him, you know? Can you put it into words? No. Uh, uh, what, uh, what, what about you? I mean, you've, you've been a trainer for so long, uh, just in terms of disappointment, it wouldn't get any more gutting than this. Nothing worse. You feel like packing up food and not coming back? And obviously upset Bede Murray reacting to the news this morning that Universal Prince is out of the Tui's new Melbourne Cup. Well, we've got a big 10 race program in front of us today. Let's have a look at the card for this afternoon. And it all begins with the traditional start, the cup hurdle. That's coming up in a little less than half an hour's time. Then we go through the lead up, the Great Western, into the Tui's new Melbourne Cup at 10 past three this afternoon. A great day ahead of us. I hope you can stay with us right throughout the day here on Network 10 around Australia or wherever you're watching around the world. We go to our first break. We're off and running on Cup Day. When we come back, we'll be checking on the all-important track condition. As we go to the break, let's relive a day that Michael Moroni and Karen McAvoy will never forget. A day that Brew wrote his name into Australian racing history. McAvoy wheels a whip 
Ben Brew draws away to win the Melbourne Cup. Two links to Yippie Yo Second.